Hey, I'm Michael and on this channel I share my best ideas and inventions on how to teach kids about technology using paper and simple electronics. This video will be an introduction to robotics using MIT App Inventor. For this I will use my programmable smartphone robot Fritz. If you don't have this robot, no worries. I made a longer video showing you exactly how to make one yourself or together with kids. I will give you a quick start guide on how to build Fritz at the end of the video. This video is separated into chapters and you can use the navigation in the timeline for navigating. This video is the start of a series of videos on how to use MIT App Inventor for robotics. So if this is interesting to you, subscribe to my channel. So MIT App Inventor is a simple app development platform for kids developed by MIT. It's open source and browser based, no installation needed. It works with Android and iOS phones and I think it's the best educational platform for our purpose. To register at MIT App Inventor, you can use a Google account, but there's also a way to use it without registering at all, which is great for working with a group of kids. Kids will get a revisit code that they can use to revisit their projects later. First, you need to start a new project. Once it is loaded, you will see this screen. This is the designer screen. There's another screen called the blocks screen. You switch between them at the top right. The designer screen is about designing your app. To do this, you have all sorts of components at the left side. They are categorized and you can find pretty much anything there. Buttons and images, text boxes, layout options, media components, drawing and animation, maps, sensors, social options and much more. We will only need a few of them and look at those later. If you drag a component to the smartphone screen, it gets also added to the components list. Whatever component is selected can be modified within the properties panel. For testing purposes, let's add a text box component to our app and type in some text. Also, we add a button component and change the text and color of it. The blocks screen has a large white coding area that will hold our blocks. To the left, there are all possible blocks in categories. There are the built-in blocks, which are all blocks that are absolutely necessary for whatever you want to code. To keep things simple, there are additional categories for each component you added in a designer screen. Like our text box. Here you can find all blocks related to this component. Down at the right corner, there's the trash where I can put blocks I do not need. So let's add a little interactive element. For example, let's change the color of the text by pressing the button. So I go to my button component and choose the when button one click block. Now go to text box one and choose set text box one text color two. Now we need a color from the built-in category and that's it. So how do we test our app? That is super simple. All you need is the App Inventor companion app available for iOS and Android. Also, your phone has to be connected to the same Wi-Fi as your PC. At the top menu, choose Connect and choose AI Companion. Now start your app and choose Scan QR Code. Scan the QR code from the screen. Now your app should be loading. There's also an option to use a USB connection, but I find the Wi-Fi connection super convenient. Now let's try our app. Awesome, it works. To restart our app, we can hit Refresh Companion App Screen. Now we can test our app again. And the best thing is, this is a live connection, so I can change stuff on my computer, like the color of the button or the color in my text color block, and it will all be automatically updated. So let's get started with our first robotics app. For all who haven't seen my previous video, Fritz works by reading light values of the white and black rectangles on the smartphone screen. White means the motor on that side of the robot gets powered. Black means the motor stops. A gray value will be a slower speed of the motor. Open a new project and set the background color of our screen from default to black. Now for the rectangles. 
Since there is no rectangle component, I use a text box without text but with background color. Make sure text and hint properties are empty and change the background color from default to white. Choose white and not none, which may look like white. Get another text box and do the same. So now we have a problem. We can't just drag around the text boxes to place them side by side. So this is because app design must be responsive. Different phones have different sizes and you can even hold them horizontal or vertical. So we have to design our screen by telling the components how they should behave in relation to the full screen size. That's what the layout components are for. We use a horizontal arrangement. Now we can drag both text boxes into the arrangement. They are now side by side. To bring our text boxes to the bottom of the screen, we select the arrangement and change the color of it to black. Now change the height from automatic to fill parent. To make sure it also stretches the full width, we choose width fill parent. Now we do the same thing for the text boxes, so the text boxes fill up the whole container. Now our text boxes cover the whole screen, but we want to have our robot show a face above the text boxes. Images can only be added into a canvas, so we drag a canvas above our arrangement and change the background color. For the canvas, we choose a height by percentage. Let's use 60%. Also, let's stretch the width of the canvas to fill the screen by choosing Fill Parent. Now, let's bring a background image in by choosing Upload. you find the link to my image in the video description. Once it is uploaded, we can select it. That already looks great. And whatever your screen size is, the robot's face will take 60% of the screen and the two buttons will share the lower 40% of the screen. Let's test our app. To me, it looks great. If something is not aligned properly, you can always change the height and width of your elements. But let's see. If I touch the text box, I can enter some text. Let's change that. Select the text boxes and activate Read Only. That way, it's just a box without any text, but with background color. So this is already a pretty cool test app because I can change the color of my text boxes here on my PC and it will be updated on my phone. So this is a bit like a remote control and you can test your robot even without coding. Now let's create this little test app that uses two switches to control the colors of our boxes. To do that, add another horizontal arrangement and add two switches to it and change the color of it to black. Change the font color and background color of the switches and change the text. Great! If you want to optimize the look of your app, you can always use empty arrangement objects to add empty spaces where needed. Before we start coding, we need to check the names of our components. Make sure that the text box under switch 1 is called text box 1 and under switch 2, text box 2. If this is not the case, rearrange the text boxes or the switches. You can also rename the components if you want. Now let's get coding. Click on blocks. Now find your switch 1 and drag the block when switch 1 changed to the code area. Now find text box 1 and take the block set text box 1 background color. Now we need a color block from colors. But wait a second. So we want to change the color to white if the switch is activated, but to black if it is deactivated. We can do that by asking our program what the current state of the switch is. Do this by finding the if then else block. That block asks a question to the program and whatever the answer is, one of two cases will be executed. How do we ask a question? Find switch one on block and put it in the empty space of the if block. That block asks if switch one was set to on. Let's drag our color block into the then bracket. Now duplicate it by right clicking. Change the new color to black and put it into the else bracket. Now we can get the whole if statement into the when switch1 changed block. 
So now when the state of the switch changes, we ask if the switch changed to on. If so, we make the text box white. If it changed to off, we change the color to black. All we need to do now is duplicate the whole thing and change both switch1 dropdowns to switch2 and both textbox1 to textbox2. Now we have two working switches. Let's test our robot. It works exactly as I want. This is already really fun to play with. So that's it. To get started, check the links in the video description. In my next video, we will get a little more advanced by programming an automated sequence of moves for our robot to solve a little puzzle. So if this is interesting to you, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And I share all my MIT App Inventor files on my Patreon page. So if you want to start right away with my apps, consider supporting my work on Patreon. Finally, Here's the quick start guide if you do not have a smartphone robot yet. First, follow the link in the description to go to my DIY smartphone robot page and order all required components. I provide the exact links that I use on my website. I use DigiKey because you can get most materials there with a single shipping. If you haven't used DigiKey before, there's a checkout as guest option available. With the ordered parts, kids can start by building my easy robot first. It uses a simple paper circuit and it is already lots of fun to build. So kids will have a fast feeling of success. If they want, they can upgrade their easy robot step by step with these different upgrades. Note that you will need some additional materials for these optional upgrades. Once kids are ready for more, they can create a new paper circuit and simply exchange the existing circuit on their robot. That will turn the easy robot into a smartphone robot. Again, all templates and instructions are free to access and I provide a test video for the smartphone robot. That way kids can try out their robot right away without coding. Once that is done, kids can start programming the robot via MIT App Inventor. And this video was just the start of it. There's a lot more to come. Oh. And if you already have components, my Patreon page might be interesting to you. I made a variation of my robot that uses typical makerspace components like breadboards and standard DC motors. Instructions for this robot are available for my Patreon community. You will find a link to my Patreon page in the video description. So now that's it. Thanks for watching, have fun and see you next time.